All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, according to UNICEF, one of one rather in every five of the world's out of school children is in Nigeria. Even though primary education is officially free and compulsory, about 10.5 million of the country's children aged between 5 to 14 years are not in school. Only 61% of 6 to 11 year olds regularly attend primary school and only 35.6% of children aged um, between uh, I think six and nine, 36 and 59 months receive early childhood education. In the north of the country, the picture is even bleaker with a net attendance rate of 53%. Getting out of school children back into education poses a massive challenge. Now, increasing funding to education sector is very important. Now, to take Nigeria uh, or Nigeria's pros pros uh, prosperous and also give it opportunities for job, um, private sectors to put funds, private sectors need to put in funds into development of the child and um, the educational sector in this country. So what is a currency or what is currently in place and how we can improve the educational system in Nigeria is a question we are asking tonight, right? What can we do? Please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 You can also tweet at us at Wish Afco one with the hashtag Wish Show. Even my education as reading is uh, entering something. But hey, um, anytime I'm talking about education, I try mm -hmm. to control myself because mm -hmm. it's something that is a pain point for me. Yeah. It's a pain point because um, I see it all the time happen. Even first of all, let's even start with our educators. The people that did not pass WAEC, they didn't pass JAM, they did like they made like three WAEC results, went to College of Education, mm. and you know, passed out. They would have start teaching. So, so um, you are meant not in all cases. Wait, teacher, teacher, tell me now, tell me, tell me. That statement. Oh yeah, tell me now, teacher. We have educators who are they know what they're doing, and what they actually need is to upscale and rescale what they already have. So where we have educators in Nigeria, uh, the major problem we have with educators in Nigeria is the fact that when we try to get what we do, we are not, um, when we do what we do, we are not well paid, we are underpaid, we are stressed out, we are worked up, and at the end of the day, we are overworked for it. So I wouldn't say that we do not know our onions. We do know our onions, but our major problem is those we work for. Whether you see, private sector, you want, do you want me to attack you? <laughs> or you want me to... Or in the government sector. So I wouldn't say that all educators, you get your uh -huh. job like But wait now, so. wait. Let me tell you, the statistics shows I have tried oil and gas <laughs> job. It did not work. I tried banking, they did not carry me. I tried sectors, it did not work. So ah, what is the next option, teacher? That's the statistics. Mm -hmm. It is, it, it, I, don't, I don't see a lot of people, it will be very few people that I've seen that set out from day one that I want to be a teacher. And they went to school, they studied English, brilliant results, and they came out and they went straight to teaching. Very few people. Most of the educators that we have in this country, right, they are really, it's like a third, fourth option. If this one no work, this one will work. If that one no work, that's how it's always been. But hey, I get you. There's underpayment and overworking in the structure, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. People do not understand and appreciate and recognize the roles of teacher in this country. So that's why they are relegated, up. right? I, I get that part. And it's a fantastic argument because guess what? That is then now the basis why we have very poorly, uh, what's it called? remunerated teachers um, and paying, uh, I mean, d um, churning out poorly educated children. But let me hear your thoughts quickly because I want to bring <clears> in our guest. Jennifer. Um, so personally, yeah, I, I think that the education system or educational system in Nigeria needs to be improved on, like seriously, drastic change. Um, I think when I was in secondary school, there was something that I noticed in one of our chemistry teacher. The notebook that he was using to teach us was very brown. And based on the feedback that we had gotten from other people, that is the same notebook that he had been using 10 years 
Yes. Tie us to when we became his Very students. brown notebook. Let me write it down. And, and to me, at that point, we, we were all very surprised and shocked. Because we had sisters and brothers who had <coughs> gone through the same school. So they would keep asking you, ah, you remember we that chemistry book. teacher, right? <laughs> <laughs> because they also witnessed the same thing. So one thing we kept asking ourselves was, when did he write this note? Mm -hmm. And why isn't it changing? And why is the school not doing something about it? Hmm. Questions I have. For me, I do not school in Nigeria, but it's almost, I, I, I would not want to compare per se, but I had siblings that schooled in Nigeria. And I remember then um, when um, there was this aptitude test something, I did not do it when I was about entering the university, but they did it. So I remember then um, one of my siblings said his name came out the next day. He said he couldn't find his name. So there is just that image of corruption even in an educational system where people can buy results replace things and at the end of the day people come out not really knowing what they studied in school because they've paid their way through mm -hmm. well let me keep my comments um till as we progress in the conversation Tino Ade Olufumilayo Olufolabi is an accomplished educator with over 25 years of experience in teaching and leading. I hope it's not the brown book. <laughs> <laughs> her passion for education was born out of her burning love for children and her firm belief in the fact that every child can reach his or her potential with excellent experience in program initiative, staff development, promoting a safe environment, and uh, optimizing learning. She holds a remarkable uh, record for exceeding all the faculties go through good ex um, external and internal communication and a strong commitment to maintaining a student-centered learning school and she has joined us live in studio without the brown book <laughs> <laughs> because now when we sit to the five years of it, yes, i just remember the brown book but i mean right um thank you first of all for joining us you look amazing uh, so, I mean, so this conversation, I saw you nodding your head when Jennifer was saying mm -hmm. and when Glory was talking and, of course, Isi. Quickly, right, when Jennifer was talking, I remember the same thing. I studied physics in the university, right? We were still learning how to deal with analog matter when people had gone digital. Digital. First of all, I think, I don't know, what, what, what would you place as the foundation of the the um, educational challenge that we have in Nigeria. Will you place it at the heart of, um, what's it called, the manpower, that's the teachers, or would you place it at the heart of funding, or will you place it at the heart of maybe government policies? What is the main disconnect that causes the educational system to continuously uh, nosedive? Thank you very much for having me. Um, hmm. When you talk about education, it actually cuts to the core for me. Um, it's not about that. The first thing that you have to consider when you talk about education is what's the curriculum? Huh. Who is designing the curriculum? Mm. Who is making those policies? And we've, I found out in all my years that, unfortunately, when these policies are being made, the people in the sector are the last to be called to contribute mm. to that sector. It's like when I was um, a younger teacher, we used to say um, amongst my colleagues that they put together carpenters and bricklayers to, to come up with curriculum that we're going to deliver to children of the future. Mm. How then are they ever going to catch up with their peers? Mm. You know, because what they need is not supplied by the people who know it. And so who put it down? And so that's why we're far behind. We're readers in Nigeria. God, we're readers. We, we struggle, we strive, we do, but we find out that we're still behind. Mm. And the reason we are behind is because there, are, there is no curriculum. There's no basis for the curriculum. The curriculum does not translate to what is the everyday life. There's a disconnect mm. between what is delivered. That's why the person with the brown book keeps recycling the brown book because he's not, he's not looking at the fact that education is in levels. And so when you had a level, what you were taught, you can teach it to the children. 
Hi. of these days. He and it's his own school when he was, he was his own That's when he was what the book, the book in school. So he imagines that he will teach the same thing well, he was taught 25 question. years ago. So who is responsible for this curriculum? Now, the, the education ministry is, is supposed to be responsible for this curriculum. Unfortunately, the people who are also in this education ministries are ignorant. Hmm. And so it, it just happens that it's not inclusive to find out exactly what these children need. What do they need at this time? Because when I look at the, for example, the ICT curriculum of huh. today, is, 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 they're talking about mainframe and they're talking about the computer of the, you know. <laughs> and I'm wondering, how is that useful? Put that in history. Mm. Take that out of ICT and, and put, put that in, in history. history class. Yeah. That's where you, they tell you, okay, what they, they used, used to, to be use. a computer like yes, this. Yes, they used to be a computer. I show them the picture. Yes, just because you want them to know where all this came from. Because mm. it's also helpful for them to know where, what happened. The journey. Yes. And the transition. And then th what tra how did the transition? How better are we from that time? Mm. You know, but when you put it in ICT and you expect the children, that's the, that's the, that's the part of it that they would, they would learn. That's why she said when she got to 100 level, she found out what they taught them in, in, in 400 level was what somebody else in another country was learning in 100 level. That's the reason it is recycled. It's just recycled. It's not, it's not, it's not moving. Hmm. It's not growing. My question was, um, you have nailed it on the head when you stated that the curriculum of Nigeria, the Nigerian curriculum currently is nothing to not not nothing to write him about but there is a lot to do mm -hmm. with it if i stand corrected the last time they actually involved um educators in making the cu curriculum was when uh, was in 1969 mm -hmm. i stand corrected mm -hmm. now in this context where do we now how do we now move forward from this um this um eclectic curriculum we've ha we have we've had for so long how do we infuse skills into it to help the students to up their game in class okay oh uh, well um it's going to take some doing it's not going to be as easy it's really going to take some doing first of all the people in the in the, in the people making the policies have to first of all accept mm. that there is something wrong. When they accept that there is something wrong, we're going to have to keep on talking and enforcing. Mm. And there's there's need for training. Mm. Unfortunately, when you talk about teachers um, and the problem of teachers and the problem of educators. It's a function of training. If I don't have something, I can't give it. I can't give it. Somebody must help me to get what I need. And f these days, thank God, there are more, um, there are, there are more facilitators um, who are ready to actually go teach people. But also, it is important, because when you're talking about underpaying, that's another problem. Mm. Because somebody mm. so who there's is, still a financial yes, problem. Yes, there's still the financial problem. Because mm. when you say yes. underpaying, you, 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 somebody will give only 100% attention when the person is satisfied. This person mm. is relatively comfortable. True. Then the person can go. There are, there are a lot of free online trainings. Free. But you, you, the person who is not yet comfortable does not think of the free... They're, they're spending their time looking for more money. Mm -hmm. And so a teacher's time is extremely precious because the time for preparation is far more than the time to deliver. When you see somebody who is not prepared, it, it will be very obvious from the outcomes that this person is not prepared. And the children will be the worst for it. But in order for, them, for us to be able to do that, the teachers also have to understand that I have a lot to learn. Um, trying to employ people is a problem. Employ teachers mm. is a big problem. Also because they don't have continuous education. Today there's a strike. Tomorrow there's another strike. How much of the time when they're supposed to be, the four years they're supposed to train, how much of the time are they in school? Mm. So sometimes it's not even their fault because even when they sit with you and you want to have an interview, they can't speak 
you know, correct English all the way. And then you're expecting that to... So it, it, the, the, whole, the ramifications of all this are a lot. And it's going to take a lot of people to get together so, to make sure this happens. I, I, I like Gloria and um, Jennifer mm. to come in. Yeah. I just want to hear your quick thoughts mm. on private institutions. Mm. Because now, you know we had federal um, schools and yes. all of that yes. in those days. Mm. And all of a sudden... The private schools, they saw a gap mm. and they started filling, the gap. Uh, filling that gap. Mm. But I feel like, I think that has been what has increased the problem of the educational sector, mm. Mm. right? You know, because maybe if we had, you know, probably <coughs> twisted the arms of government mm. to make sure that those schools are, because there are some parts in the world that private schools are shutting down because mm. they don't have customers, mm. you know? So what, what's your take? The, the private school, emergence of private schools, did it help? The educational system or it actually further added problem to it i think to a very large extent it helped okay. because the vacuum would have been larger it would have been worse if the private schools did not step in at the time the only thing that i found out was that that maybe pulled back the hand of government mm. because there was now a choice and parents had a choice i mean if i want for example now with the strikes the, the private universities are populated. Yes. Yeah. They have rejected they are, they are rejected because the thing is, even the ones who you, whose names you don't even know, they are actually populated now with this, particularly this last one that was so long. The strike, yes. The parents just pulled their children out from the um, public schools and then put them in the private universities so that if you say, I'm going in for four years, you should actually go in for four years. It shouldn't be more than four years. Mm. And my daughter was a, was a victim of this. I mean, she went into study law. Instead of a five-year course, she ended up in seven years. Oh, my God. I became disillusioned. Because, I mean, I, I, at the time, I, I, she, she, I had to keep her hopes up. I had to keep pumping. I had to keep pumping. Because at the point, she said she didn't want to go to law school anymore. She was fed up. She was tired, you know. And... It, it, it was just a tug of war. So I made up my mind when my son was going to get into university that he would go to private. I wasn't going to be able to stand that thing again. It was going to be four, and it was going to be four. So these are the things that the private universities and secondary schools actually came to feel. Mm. Or else it would have been worse off. You can imagine if during that strike, if 80% of Nigerian children were in public school. What was the quality? But let me let Gloria come in because we have plenty of questions. <laughs> the quality? I also have quite, um, plenty of questions, yeah. pardon. Yeah. But I think you've um, really uh, explained one of it, which is the curriculum issue. Mm -hmm. So my question now is, what role do, especially when it comes to private schools, mm -hmm. what role do these school owners have in terms of training the teachers? Mm -hmm. Because um, other organizations, I know, they have budgets for training mm -hmm. of staff. Mm -hmm. So what role, okay, a teacher comes to your school and you feel like this person has the potential, but it's not optimal enough. Mm -hmm. So what, how intentional is it, you know, training the teachers to make sure that they deliver quality education to the students? Mm. You know, it's all still about funding. Mm. It all comes down to funding. But, for, but private schools have money. They, they don't. You think they do. They don't. You see, the reason why it is a problem is because there is so much to give back as a result of the fact that you pay for it. There's so much you have to give back. And so sometimes the training of the teachers take the back Suffer. seat because they, they have to fulfill some other things and then the, uh, the, the situation of the economy doesn't help. Anybody who is a, 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 the owner of a school has to have determination, has to have the drive, has to have the exposure to say, whatever happens, there's going to be a place for training. And that's why they are different from themselves. They are not all, you know, there are those who came into it because they just want money, yeah. not because they have a passion for education. Yeah. They just want money. They feel... The school business is, is, is money spinning business. Mm. They get in, but they find out it's not true. It's not true. That is not, it's not a money spinning business. There's a lot that you have to do. Before any school owner starts to get any profit, it takes up to seven years. Mm. Wow. Before you start to get anything, it mm. takes up to seven years. The school has to stand. If you want it to, to, to go through the test of time mm. and outlive you, 
Wow. Jennifer? So yeah. talking about educators, um, teachers, lecturers, how can they improve on themselves and how can the institution assist them in doing that? Yeah, I've had situations where we had to force it. Where you didn't, you didn't push, we had to drive you to do it because a lot of things will be tied to that. Mm. You won't just be static. You have to keep moving and we will provide you avenues, pathways through which you will go, inexpensive, through which you will go and you will get taught and you have to keep the lifelong self-development. Yeah. You have to keep doing it because there will be things tied to that that you, 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 don't, you, know, you don't want to stay put because if you stay put for too long and people come and overtake you, <laughs> you're on your way out. So you do have to put things in place to ensure that people are learning. So bringing it back to um, curriculum, and I know that, oh yeah, the government has a hand in that, but are schools allowed to... Um, teach students things that are outside of a curriculum. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be under that particular subject. Now, I know that some schools have activities mm -hmm. in which they try to engage the students, mm -hmm. and some of them are teaching them um, phonetics, some of them mm -hmm. are teaching them French, um, mm -hmm. Italian, mm -hmm. and all of that, but mm -hmm. that's, not where I'm, that's not where mm -hmm. I'm coming mm -hmm. from. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about... Um, Importing, in, yeah, a, like, a, a like, UK like, curriculum, a, a importing... UK, yeah, like subjects, like different things, yeah. just to sharpen their mind i mean those things might not come out mm -hmm. in the exam yeah that is fine yeah but are, are schools allowed to do that yes um there is an exam you, you would find out that a lot of schools now do the mixture of exams mm. and so they they mix up the Ni nigerian with the british curriculum or they Absolutely. mix up the nigerian with the american curriculum it depends so they, they mix they have the mix and so the children have to have a qualifying exam and this qualifying exam is not an exam that is set in Nigeria. It's an exam that is set by the international body, mm. but it's just administered here. So th a lot of schools are, you know, take, but that, that is a, a very expensive project. Mm. That's the truth. I was going to say that it's you a, run an international it's school. It's a very expensive project yeah. to get that done. But a lot of schools who value the mix yeah. are getting it done. And they're not giving the parents a choice. Because I know that where I was um, school head, um, in fact, in all the schools I've been head in the last 15 years or 17 years, we've had that mix. And then we don't give the parents a choice to say, I don't want it. Because, yeah. you know, when something has a cost attached to it, mm -hmm. parents ask you, is it they optional? They to shy away from mm. it. No, it's not optional. It's not optional because they say, no, the children don't need it. They're going to Nigeria. I say, whether they are going to Nigeria or not, they need it. It's going to help them. You know, the, yeah. the, the business I am in now is a different whole mm. ball game because this one doesn't have any mix of Nigerian. At all. Yeah, at all. You know, but all the other schools where I've been had the mixture of the Nigerian and the British. So, but this is Canadian, completely Canadian. It's not even something that is designed here. The teachers have nothing to do with the setting of questions or the designing of the curriculum. The teachers just deliver the curriculum. Mm. And they have to be Isn't trained to deliver the curriculum. But is that, is, that not so, is that not really tough for you to be able to get teachers? Because now you're not, you're not benchmarking the standard of the teachers mm -hmm. with Nigerian standards. Mm -hmm. You are benchmarking it yes. with an international country. Yes, yes. it's a very mm -hmm. difficult process mm -hmm. to get the people who will teach that. But even when you get... First of all, you want, to, you want to know that they have a British background. You want to know that they have taught in a British school. Well, that's a requirement. Yes, that's a requirement. Interesting. Oh, wow. Then when you, when you come in, you, you are then taken through the training. You can't get into the class for one day without that training. Wow. You have to pass through the training to know exactly how to go about teaching because mm. it's more application-based. Mm. We're very used to read, God pour it down. Yeah. Read, yeah. God yeah. Yeah. down. You know, so and so we don't task work. our brain to think. Yes, it doesn't. That's why we are the way we are. Mm -hmm. And that's the truth. Mm -hmm. As much as we read, we're still like this. Mm -hmm. That's because we just, we don't read to know. We read to, to pass mm -hmm. an exam. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, yeah, and immediately the exam right. is done, you forgot it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, but this, you, you have to think. The children have yeah. to learn. Because even the children who come in, mm -hmm. are coming in from these same schools. Yeah. Yeah. And they too have to be taken through the process of unlearning yeah. and relearning. And relearning. Yes, because they, they cannot, they just can't identify with, why, why, how are we going to do this? Mm -hmm. We're not going to, um, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, it's foreign to them, plagiarism is foreign to them. Mm. 
because every everybody plagiarizes in Nigeria. Mm. And this curriculum has that, zero tolerance for plagiarism. Zero. Yeah. You can't copy one yeah. sentence from anywhere and own it. You will be found out. You must reference you it. You must reference yeah. it. And it, it, must, it must be a very short quote. Your work mm. should not even be a lot of that. Mm. It must be a lot yeah. of your thoughts. Mm. Mm. Because you are asked, what do you think? What's your, what's your opinion? Yeah. So when you have learned this now, how does it apply so how to do we you? Translate? You know what I'm asking yes. you this? Because... I see it play out, mm. and I see that the children are, that are being um, taught in these kinds of environment mm. and curriculum, yes. they actually are doing a lot better. Yes. So how do we translate that kind of, um, what's it called, curriculum and structure? How do we start to relate it? Because we're trying to find a solution here. We can't mm. continue with this kind of curriculum yes, that we have in yes, Nigeria. We, we, it we really means that it. if we continue like this, we are just going to lead to our final barrier. <laughs> As an, yes, our educational structure yeah, will just completely correct. go down. Yeah, just so it. what do we need to do? You know, how do Nigerians need to start to demand? Because now elections are around the corner. Yes. We are trying to uh, elect people. Yes. What, what should be our demand? That is the, As regards the educational system, that is just improving it. it. That is it. That is why, in the first place, all those people who say they are heads in the education sector, who don't mm -hmm. seem to know what they're doing, should be taken out. Mm. A more progressive set of people who want a better Nigeria, mm. who actually want the children to be educated, mm -hmm. should be put in. It doesn't matter. When I was, I was listening to somebody who was saying that it's not about the certificate. It's about what the person delivers. Absolutely. It's not about, okay, I came with, I, I, I went to school, I got one paper. Mm. It's mm -hmm. translate that paper mm. into real life. Make it applicable. That is what we should be looking for in the leaders that we choose. Mm. Not that people... was the question I was going to ask you. Yes. The question I was going to ask you was based on how do we emphasize on skill um, education? which is vocational education yes. instead of cognitive, because mm. everything we do in Nigeria is, has to do with cognitive skills. Yes. So how do we um, encourage our students or our learners to you know, imbibe and adopt uh, vocational studies more? Because people, that is where the, the, the skill people who is. Are, the people who are um, um, facilitating first need to know mm. that I need to put this in for the children to learn. I remember in one of the schools where I was um, head, mm. um, we had, um, aside from the owner was very big on having them learn vocational skills. And so mm. without cost, he went on to say, get experts in this field. They don't necessarily have had to go to university. Just get people who are skillful. Mm. Get them in on a particular day of the week. Get the children involved in different things somebody who likes photography get the person into photography mm -hmm. the people who like masonry get them involved in masonry the people who like carpentry get them involved so the children were moving every term they would move from one skill to the next term you are in another skill so by the time you are done after six years we get we got children who were really skillful mm -hmm. and were able to go out and actually do today they are doing things i have some of them who are big shoemakers wow big time shoemakers you know because these were, yeah these were things that they learned along with mm. all the other skills and it helped them a whole lot Kai. wow oh, wow <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's actually good to know yeah. because i've taught at different points in my life um during my first internship i was a teacher and i was an ict teacher so teaching students, and sometimes I think there was a course that I was taking. They gave me the curriculum. I said, oh, it's robotics. I said, I don't know anything about robotics. <laughs> My boss told me, you, you would learn it. Learn. Yes. Before you come to class, yes. go through it. You have Google. You have, because these children, mm -hmm. a lot of them were very interested in it because yes. it was totally different from what they would study mm -hmm. normally in yes. their classrooms. Yes. So when they come to class, be rest assured they are going to get questions because mm -hmm. they'll ask you, why is this? Why is this mm -hmm. not this way? Why is this? Yes. And even during my NYSE, 
I was working in the ministry, but then I was also a teacher on the side. And it taught me a whole lot. Mm -hmm. I fell in love with teaching because it, so it made me, I became sort of, I had to be very psychological about a lot of things because I had to take out time to understand each of the students. Mm -hmm. I needed to understand their learning power, mm -hmm. their attentiveness in class. Mm -hmm. So I didn't treat the students the, the same, same way. way. So how do we get more people like Jennifer into the teacher? <laughs> <laughs> we have one minute to go. We need to go back to the teacher training mm. colleges and make sure that we, we get them out, we churn them out from there. But it's going to take a whole lot. I promise you. It's not simple. Do you think simple. money can truly bring brighter minds into the teaching system? Yes, you it can. So? It can. Glory, let's take a can. comment and we'll wrap up the conversation. Hmm. Okay. Mm. Okay. Why I get my comment? Mm. Um, so this person says, "Good evening, my ladies." Oh, it's, it's a long comment. Sisters of what are you saying? Improving the educational system in Nigeria. I really do not have much to say. According to my beautiful sister EC, she made mention of the teachers being poorly paid, and I agree with her wholeheartedly. And if that happens, you cannot get the best out of that teacher, trust me. The government should also invent, invest in education and mm. not abandon it because it is very important. They cannot say because their children are not schooling in Nigeria, <laughs> then they will abandon it. It does not make sense to me. So glad and excited to see my beautiful ladies is my beautiful lady EC. Happy New Year to you. I miss you a lot after so many months of absence. Okay, absence. thank you, Daniel. <laughs> you know. But thank you so much. I mean, we can't take any more comments. We ran out of time, mm. but we'd love to have you over and over again thank because you. now we'll break it down. She'll come mm. and tell you how to ask questions. All these people mm -hmm. that want to be your leader, or if they eventually get their self, let's not even focus on the elections. Mm -hmm. Who are the ministers? Yes. Let's begin to ask questions. Let's begin to call them That's to order because. If we leave the educational system as it is, mm -hmm. we are going to be all be in trouble. Yeah, I tell you. Yeah, I don't tell talk you. my own. Tell you. Thank you so Thank you much. We had a fantastic Thank conversation. Thank you, Thank you, EC. Thank, Thank you, Glory. You. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Now, remember, before we go, follow us on all our yeah, social media handles at Wayshow Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment. And most importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like and share and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our quote for today, here it is again. Hi. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Oh, wow. This we cannot overemphasize, and it's just the truth. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Wait for me tomorrow. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>